My brothers and I were recently contacted by a mother and daughter from Bloomington, Indiana. Family claims they are under attack by multiple spirits inside their home. We are concerned that some of these encounters have become sexual. Now that it is actually showing some kind of aggression towards us, it scares me. Like, I don't want it to follow me. We've all had some kind of marks on our bodies from this. I have been bothered by it sexually. Where we live now is part of the farmhouse property. I would be doing dishes and the rocking chair in the living room would be rocking. And it scared me to death, but then it turned over. The water faucets would turn on by themselves. I'd have to turn them off. So I was in the family room, laying on the couch, and I was asleep. And when I opened my eyes, I seen a young man with no shirt on, and he was standing in front of me where I was laying, and he knelt down, and he started physically touching me and stuff, kissing me passionately and everything. I was scared, and I tried to move, but I couldn't. I could not move, I could not holler for help, nothing. I will feel something next to my leg or something will play with my hair. I mean, it physically done something. And I was so scared. And whenever I uh, got up and went in there to tell Ron, he had blood dripping down his face. And there were three scratch marks down his face and blood was dripping down him. It looked like an image of a man, but just a hoodie, black hoodie on in black, just solid black, couldn't see no face or anything, walking toward my bed, and then it turned around, and, and so I seen that just here, here lately. One night, I was in bed asleep, I heard talking, like people talking back and forth in the family room. I could faintly hear it, but I could hear people talking. Huge, huge snake. It looked like it was coming from my bathroom, up, and then it crawled in my bedroom at the end of the bed, and then it was going out the bedroom door. It scared me to death. And I opened my eyes, and there's a little girl that was like this, looking just about this far away from my face, looking at me. And I went like that because she was so close to me. And she had uh, curly hair. She looked to be maybe about eight or nine years old. I can't tell what it is, but I know what I see, and I know what I feel. I feel it touching me. I hear that all night long when I'm awake. I Just like somebody's in here walking around. My husband was asleep in, on the couch. Me and, and uh, one of the girls come home, and it was so filled with gas fumes. And we hurried up in the the kitchen and every one of the burners were turned on but they wasn't lit and we had to open windows we had to shut them off I swear if he had have lit his cigarette he wouldn't be here it was so full of fumes I won't stay here at night by myself no if he's gone for some reason I go elsewhere I will not stay in this house alone I've got a CPAP machine and uh, that's happened twice, where my machine has been actually turned off. Like I said, I, I don't want to be here alone, especially at night. I won't be here alone. I've lived with mom the last two years. Little things were happening then, but now it's progressively gotten worse. It's getting more close to us. Um, it's affecting my kids, but it's constantly doing something to let me know it's there. Several instances where the doors shut and open. I heard arguing, yelling, like a man yelling, items being thrown across, like banging, all kinds of stuff. And I thought we were being robbed, honestly. The next morning I got up and her bedroom door was shut. There were two footprints right in front of the door that stopped right there. Here lately, it's been tugging at my blankets. Tug the blankets where I actually have to fight for them to stay on. I rolled over and something grabbed my arm in midair and I started hitting it constantly, like just trying to get it to release me because it was holding grip, I could feel it. And whenever I touched it, it felt like flesh. It was a small arm, but it was ice, ice cold. I hear a man constantly. I hear a woman now too, which is new for me. I haven't ever heard a woman's voice. 
um, there is a little girl that runs past my bedroom window outside like something's chasing her and the screaming will get louder as it goes right by my window and then it fades off. We hear banging on the back door from the utility room where stuff also happens. Um, she heard three knocks on her window the other night when all of this was happening to me. He's wearing a hood and he has a skinny long face. He has um, thin lips but has like his cheeks closer down here instead of higher or where they normally are. The first time I saw him I didn't notice this but as I saw him several days later because it's been there about three weeks now um, I saw a hole in his head right above here. So I'm wondering if he was trying to tell me that he got shot or something. I felt something up against me too. I feel it putting its hand on me. I feel it laying close to me. I feel it pushing my back in the pressure. My hair actually will stand out and I will see it be out and I'll have to go like this to get it to go down. My blankets were suspended in front of me the other night to where they were in air and I had to grab them back. It could be a sunny day out, no water anywhere, and all of a sudden water just starts dripping down in a steady stream on my windshield, but then it turns into dots right in front of you. Whenever I watch the video back, my dash lights are going crazy when the water is dripping, but when the water stops, my dash is fine. Something that was child abuse, sexually related, um, and that she had just so much depression from that that she took too much of it and she decided to commit suicide and that she was alone. I have not slept hardly at all. I will not stay here, period. You couldn't pay me any amount of money, honestly, to stay here. It's getting physical, like I said. I have felt it physically touch me too, to where it's abuse and have had bad dreams of the person in the hoodie that was raping me. Making her presence known here is what she's meant to do so that it can't hurt us any more than it already has and that she won't leave until we find peace with getting this resolved. And I honestly believe that because this has gotten out of control. It's leaving physical bruises on us. It's keeping me from sleeping. It's making me feel like I'm crazy or paranoid, but I know what I see. I know what other people see. Hearing a man's voice say hello, everybody here has encountered something. She woke up and saw scratches down her wall behind her couch. The second we opened that door, the water turned on in front of us, full blast. Whenever she came out, she had this stuff all over her hands that looked like blood. And this stuff was so hard on the hands that it wouldn't come off for two days. Anytime I talk about these things, it's like it's there to let me know that I shouldn't. Well, before you got here, I was fine and I'm even nervous to talk. It said I feel nervous, anxious. I'm, I'm glad that you're here, but yet I'm afraid, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. But I've been fine all day. But right now I'm nervous. I think I'm probably afraid of what you'll find. It's getting worse. It's getting more personal and it's coming closer and closer, more comfortable with actually touching us and physically leaving evidence of something. At least three or four times that something here's tried to, I guess, kill you guys. Yeah. We know that somewhere along the way, one of us has had to accept it being around. But I think it's just more that we don't know what to do about it to get rid of it. And we were hoping that if it was spirits, it's somebody of our loved ones that have passed away that are watching over us. Now that it is actually showing some kind of aggression towards us, it scares me. I have been bothered by it sexually, and me and my mom both have. But now it's getting more uh, physical. And when it's happening, you can't talk. You, you want to scream, you want to, but nothing comes out. You, you, and you can't move. And that's, that's what scares me the most, is because whenever I wanted help, I couldn't even holler for help. I couldn't move, hit, nothing. I mean, it, like I was in a trance or something. 
and I felt it intertwine its finger, every single finger in between mine, and hold my hand down against the bed to where I couldn't move my hand until it was ready to release it. Okay, my brother passed away, it's been a, almost eight years ago, but he was cremated and his remains are in this this box. This is the urn type thing that they put those ashes in after a cremation, so. That's my brother. <laughs> You think he could come visit you? Yes, I do, because uh, my mother passed away in 1975. My dad passed away one year and one day later in 76. And over at the house, the house that he was in was where my mom and dad were. And I stayed with them after my divorce, and we would hear dad walk across the floor upstairs because we'd been over there when he was alive and heard him walk across the floor we'd hear the same thing and so I'm pretty sure that dad comes to visit I'm sure he would come visit us if that's possible <laughs> hmm. sure enough that's pretty cool thank you sure no problem but when you said that room I thought Jim immediately thought of it that his remains are right there on top of the china cabinet so yeah i had you know those two sitting on the couch and then you were sitting behind there uh, so there's nobody else in the house with us so to see something walk through there i can't explain it but that was just a picture of a campfire and i'll show you that's what they found which looks just like my grandpa that I never met, but let me show you these other other ones that they have. I have all kinds of, but anyways, that was him in three different time frames. And how long was he passed before this picture was taken? This was about three years ago, so several years. Oh, he, yeah, Dad died in 84. We are playing a Ouija board in the basement, and that was the first time I had ever encountered an Ouija board, didn't know what it was. This guy came through, um, he was very angry, that we were playing with it and he started cussing us out the board went crazy flying by itself back and forth um the only thing that we got out of him is asking him how he died and he said a car wreck but i don't know if that could have anything to do with what's going on or an opening to something my mom played with an ouija board too when she was younger i only played with it once can you put the mic on her yeah I was playing with it and it told me all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was moving even on its own with me just playing with it. And I asked, I said, how do you want me to put you down? You know, I'm going to bed. And it told me to put it, the board on the right side of the bed is a full size bed underneath the right side, down by the foot, put the board down and then turn the thing that moves around upside down on it and leave it alone. The next morning I got up and it was gone. After playing with it that one night, I've never seen it again. Just all kinds of stuff happened at that house too. But that's where it first started. No, I didn't put it in the box or anything. It said to put it down like that and then to turn that thing over where the feet of it was facing up. I, I can't actually remember that date. But I, we moved out here when I was in the fifth grade. And I heard my mom holler for me. So we went back to my house to see what mom wanted and she said she didn't holler for me. But we heard it. We heard Jenny. And then those barn doors started going like this. We hear- It looked like a shadow went straight through that room over there. We see the dark outlined figure of a man um, around here, mostly in mom's room, but mm -hmm. We've seen him walking around. In that no. Room. Yeah, I know. Because it was like. You oh, I have another thing to tell you. Frame, was... There is this one incident, and that's funny that you mentioned that walking through the dining room. I sat there a good 30 minutes with her. She would not eat her vegetables still. Then all of a sudden, she started eating them. Every last bit of them, she finished. And as she was doing it, she was staring from the kitchen table into this dining room. 
and she's just staring and eating like this. And again, she's two and a half, three years old. And so we look over to the dining room and I said, what, what is it? And she's like, a man. And she pointed, she said, standing over there, he told me I better eat my vegetables. She said, then he flew away. And you know, we see shadows a lot. I'm always thinking somebody's behind me. But I know that it wouldn't be a child spirit, that it was probably a doppelganger. With only four of us inside the house during this encounter, I have no explanation for this entity passing through the doorway. With the winter storm quickly approaching Indiana, we have decided to begin our investigation. Okay, so we just wrapped up the interviews, did the walkthrough, a lot of crazy stuff happening inside this house. So we're gonna get Jenny and her family some answers hopefully tonight, but it definitely seems like something dark has been following them for a long time. And with their history with the Ouija boards and stuff like that, I'm not quite for sure. But when I was shooting the interviews, it looked like I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video, but I had her here, the other woman here, and her husband was sitting right behind the couch and looked like a dark shadow. Went straight through the kitchen into the like living room area. Yeah. If anybody's inside this house, my name's Josh, this is Rocky and Sean. We want you to make yourself known and come out and communicate with us. Can you see or hear us, yes or no? Or something. Male voice? Yeah. We heard you. They say that you come back in this bedroom, you crawl on bed with her. Is that you walking strong or? No, I'm staying still. It's not like something walked across the carpet. If you can see us, come out and make yourself known right now. Can you hit something really? Oh, that room just got super dark. It's like that room was dark and then just got like crazy dark. Are you in that room now? Set our alarm off, it's on the bed. I was looking in here and the room was dark and it's like you know a dimmer switch it's like somebody turned that darkness down Jenny said that you crawl on this bed with her and you've sexually assaulted her who are you did you die on this property But it looked like there was a dark shadow right around your shoulder. Mm -hmm. You can look at it later. Yeah, they see dark shadows in here. But it looked like it came up over your shoulder. Whoever's in this house, whatever's in this house, come forward and show yourself right now. If you don't show yourself, we're going to know that you're weak. I swear to God, it looks like that back room just keeps going black, mm -hmm. dark, and it gets light, dark, and then light right behind you. I don't know what the hell's back there. They say that they see shadows, hear walking, things moving. Give us a sign of your presence and communicate with us. So. Can you do that louder?
you know that we can hear you. We're not afraid of you. Now they say that they see like the dark shadows, hear footsteps knocking. And then they hear like a child. They'll hear a child outside. The child, can you speak to us? Oh, right behind you, Sean. Dark shadow, right by the bed. Did you hear that big bang too? Right, right before you said that? Right by you, right here, a shadow. Are you in this room? I feel like it's in this room. We're here to help the family tonight. Do you want to help the family? They say not to be on this bed. I'm touching the bed. Why did you not want us to touch the bed? We're going to do a cleansing in this house. And whoever or whatever's in this house, you're going to have to leave. So if you've got a message for us or for the family, we want you to communicate with us. You can do the girl's bedroom to the right. Is there anybody in here with us? You keep on picking on people in here. Now you got three guys in here you can pick on. Do you like to show yourself? Can you tell me if you're trying to hurt this family? Did you just hear that? Yeah. It sounded like it came from freaking out there. Fuck out there. Family would like to know, does these ashes have anything to do with what's going on in this house? Can you tell me what your name is? Feels like something's touching my left side of my neck right now. Are you trying to touch me? You want to hold people down in their beds and do stuff to them? Try to do something to me. Does it sound like you hear a moaning? Or yeah, I heard like something that? right there. It sounded like I was hearing like a male voice. Like an old, an older male voice that had like a, I don't know. Like a scratchy voice? Yeah. That's why I, like I heard them moaning, but it's, I don't know. Couldn't really make it out. Walk up to Josh so I can see you. That's kind of weird, but I swear I just seen something moving on the floor right behind you, Josh. The weird thing about it was it looked like kind of white. It wasn't black.
I didn't know that you're here and why you're here. heard that voice again. It's a real faint voice too. Okay, I'm on this bed. What are you gonna do? Did you hear that? Yeah. Almost sounded like it was in that room next to us off to the right. Or that bathroom. I forgot about the bathroom. It's not like it came from the bathroom. I was going to say it could have been there. Are you going to come over here and do something to me? Good spirits don't harm people or try to do anything to them. They're not here to scare us. Maybe you're as scared what Josh is going to do to you tonight. Is this making you mad, me laying here? Do something if you want me to get up. Can you tell me what your name is? Is your name Eddie? Tell him, so that's not my name. Then tell me what your name is. George. Is your name George? Do you like having us here? That's where I just heard it say yes. Okay. What room do you like to be in? In here, kid. Yeah. Yeah, I heard the kid. That's the kid's name and see how old he is. What? That's the kid's name and see how old he is. The little kid I just heard that's trying to talk to me. Can you tell me how old you are? Say nine. Can you tell me your name? Something about his mommy. What? Something about his mommy. Is your name Eddie? Did you lose your mommy? Do you need help finding your mom? I won't let the bad man hurt you, okay? Yeah, like a bang? Mm -hmm. Or out, out here off the wall. You come to me, I'll help you. I won't let the bad man hurt you. Tell me if I'm getting close to you. Are you scared? It's Rocky. I'm in the house alone. Can you tell me your name?
who's touching the family members? Why are you affecting the family? Why are you in the bedroom? Who's been touching Jenny? What are you doing in this house? Enjoying the home. Are you the one getting in bed with Jenny? Just said it again. Do you live on this property? There's ashes on top of that shelf. If those are your ashes, can I see you please? Manifest yourself so that I can see you. Hey Josh, can you come back this way? It just got really freaking dark right behind me. I mean really freaking dark back there. Can you go stand next to Sean? Is what Rocky was saying, was that true? I'm exiting cold. Was Rocky making you mad? I'm just trying to see if something comes by here. I feel like it's cold. Oh, there is something by you. Is there? Because mm -hmm. my back's getting cold. Is Are you right touching here? Rocky? Is that here? Which side is it on? Other side. How big is it, Josh? It was short like a kid. Go stand next to Rocky. Can you come over here? You can come over here and hold my hand. Are you in this bedroom? They say that they see you by this bed. I want to see you. Is there a child here? Where are you? We've got a device. We're going to find you. You can't keep hiding from us. Go by the bed. Oh, there it is. Did it go away again? Mm -hmm. See, I told you we would find you. Go stand by Rocky. Go crawl on the bed. Clearly that's where you like to hang out. What is your name? Can you talk? 
we can see you. We want you to talk to us. That one looks bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and ask. What me. is your name? No way. What do you want with this family? Why? Can you go to the other side of the bed to see if it comes back? Because I think what you did is you scared it off. Come back over by the bed. I'm over here now. Uh, it's back over there. Well, where you guys were just standing there. Tell me your name. Why are you in this room? We can help you leave. Are you evil? Are you trying to jump on the bed? Say something bad. Yep, stop right there. Try to try to. Hey, this is my bed now. You don't get to share my bed with me no more. Are you mad I'm in your bed? It looked like it was like trying to lean towards you. That was Josh. You want to touch me? Why are you messing with Jenny? It's like I'm sitting here watching this and it'll be there, but then it'll like jump towards the bed and then be gone. Like right now it's back. But then I see a blue light go towards Rocky. Yeah, right there it just jumped clear across the freaking bed. But it was still standing there. There's like a lines that'll shoot clear on the other side of the bed. So what's causing that? Yeah, it's whatever standing right there. Sean said he, he found a new girlfriend. This is going to be Sean's new bed. Sean's kicking you out of the house. Can you move something for us? That wall in there. It sure is. Is it in there? Yeah. In that doorway. Yeah, it's where. For some reason, I like now that. it's going. Hey, I like a cold breeze over here. Walk in there, Sean. Jesus. Tough. You was out there. Don't do that to me. Holy crap. Move something. Let us know you're in here. We're going to do a cleansing and we're going to leave. Are you tapping on the window? You tap on the window again. Come on, right here where I'm standing is where I just saw you. Tonight's your last night inside this house. It's it keeps coming and then going. It's the tiny one, Josh. Well, let's get ready to do the cleansing. Okay, so we brought the family back here in the house. We're getting ready to do the cleansing. We just wrapped up the investigation. And we're going to start here in this room and then work our way through the house. We've got the front door cracked. And like I said, if you guys experience anything or feel anything or want to say anything, feel free to. Lord, we ask that you please defend us as we enter into battle and push all the negative energy out of this house. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, send the angels of heaven down to protect us. We come in the name of Jesus, under his authority and under his blood, 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we command you to leave this house and leave this family alone. We bind you with the blood of Jesus Christ. You must stop all activity inside this house and all attacks on this family. We seal this room with the sign of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. We close all entryways, doorways, and portals inside this house. We seal them tight forever with the blood of Jesus Christ. We seal this threshold with the sign of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you send the Holy Spirit down to protect this family. We seal this mirror with the blood of Jesus Christ and the sign of the cross. We close all entryways, doorways, and portals inside this house. Lord, we ask that you push this negative energy out. We seal this bed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Any and all spirits, we cast you out. We seal this doorway with the sign of the cross. We seal this bathroom with the sign of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Any and all spirits, good and evil, you must leave this house. Please go be free and be at peace. It is Jesus who gives us authority to cleanse this house and cast you out. Any spirits that may have been invited here, you must leave. The spirits that we documented in this bedroom tonight, we ask you to go be at peace. Leave this house and leave this family. We set you free in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We seal this room with the blood of Jesus. We seal this bed with the blood of Jesus Christ. You must leave this house and leave this family. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Any doorways that may have been opened through a Ouija board, Lord, we ask that you seal those doorways and close those Ouija boards. We seal this mirror in this area with the sign of the cross. The sign of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you please protect this house and protect this family and keep them safe. Let no harm come to them and just drive out all this evil and negative energy. It's inside this house and on this property. We cast you out now and forever in the name of Jesus Christ. What I'll do is I'll go around and bless the outside of the house as well. Although we documented some amazing paranormal footage during this investigation, we still have no clue as to why the spirits chose this family. Is it possible this land holds residual energy? Is the mother and daughter sensitive to the other side? Or did their interaction with the Ouija board invite these spirits forward? For now, the family will continue with a daily cleansing as directed by my brothers and I, and hope one day this house and land is safe for the family again.